Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All rest to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, you are on mute, Guru Maharaj. So, um, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, uh, thank you for joining. Please accept my humble obeisances. All rest to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. And uh, today, uh, Guru Maharaj is going to uh, read from uh, Sankalpa Kaumidi, in the book Sankalpa Kaumidi, which is written by His Holiness uh, uh, Shivaram Swami Maharaj. And uh, so once after three to four pages, Guru Maharaj will read. And after that, uh, Guru Maharaj wants us everyone to participate in the discussion. Um, it, it will be like an interactive session today. Um, thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for joining. Uh, you can please take over. Thank you so much. Om Gyanti Mirandasya Kina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilita Mena Tasma Shri Guru Venamaha Ma Om Vishnu Padai Krishna Prasthaya Bhutalai Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamini Namaste Saraswati Deva Gauravani Gracharya Nini Vishisa Sunyavadi Asyatya Desa Tarene Panchakalpati Rupascha Kripa Sindha Veva Chapatita Naam Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasa Divar Vakvirinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so as was announced, um, I have chosen a little excerpt from His Holiness Shivaram Maharaj's recent book release, San Kalpa Komodi, which deals with various uh, subtle, but actually very direct, both subtle and very direct principles to help the practitioner in devotional service become more focused on the goal of Krishna consciousness, which is obviously to develop pure love for Krishna. Uh, in reading this particular book, which I spent uh, you know, last year, mostly the year 2020, reading the entire book and also finding great amounts of interesting points that were extremely helpful in helping to understand more how to uh, advance in Krishna consciousness, which you don't generally find in the other writings by uh, Srila Prabhupada. Although all the same principles are there, but uh, Maharaj's uh, very uh, fine intelligence, he goes deeper into the more uh, subtle, and sometimes emotional aspects of Krishna consciousness that helps to reawaken certain points of uh, clarity, points to focus on, which will uh, help us um, overcome some of the uh, anarthas in our devotional service. I rec highly recommend the book. It is a voluminous book. It's, it's up to around 800 pages. But it's an interesting read. And uh, I pick, particularly picked out a few pages from one part of the book towards the later part of the book, which I'll read. And then after I read it, we'll post it on the share screen so everyone can see it. And uh, I would like the devotees to try very carefully to listen to what is being read and try to understand what is being said and, all, and also to think what it means both in the practical sense and in the philosophical application. Then the, uh, the philosophy is not very hard to understand. It's quite easy, but it's interesting how it's being presented. And I'll begin that reading right now. Okay. So this is, these are from pages 702 to 704 in the book. We should briefly emphasize the connection between cultivating emotion 
and hearing. The correlation between the two is straightforward. The subject a devotee hears makes an impression upon his consciousness. Thus, the emotional experience and emotional influence of the subject are impressed into the consciousness of the hearer and the two become one. I'll read that again. The correlation between the two is straightforward. The subject a devotee hears makes an impression upon his consciousness. Thus, the emotional experience and the emotional influence of the subject are impressed into the consciousness of the hearer and the two become one. Everyone has experience of even mundane things like movies, books, and songs being the source of emotional and psychological involvement. We identify with what we hear. A love narrative induces a feeling of romance, a horror story of fear, an action drama pumps the adrenaline. This is akin to mantras or incantations that are able to invoke weapons, subtle beings, or events. The reason is that words or combinations of words are endowed with certain powers. This holds true for both the mundane and the spiritual sound vibration. The two clearly differing in their potency and the results they invoke. The process by which any, of, any kind of sound vibration induces a corresponding feeling in which is called Tad Baba is explained in the following words of Sri Palan. A verse we have amply quoted in this book. I'll read the verse. Tadad Puma Mukta Samasta Bandhanas Tad Baba Bhava Nukrita Saya Kritihi Nirdagya Nirdagya Vibanjano Sayo Mahiyasa Bhakti Prayogena Samatyat Hok Sajam. Translation. The devotee is then freed from all material contamination because he constantly thinks of the Lord's pastimes. And because his mind and body have been converted into spiritual qualities. Because of his intense devotional service, his ignorance, material consciousness, and all kinds of material desires are completely burned to ashes. This is the stage at which one can achieve the shelter of the Lord's lotus feet. Well, that's a very important. I'll read that translation again. The devotee is then freed from all material contamination because he constantly thinks of the Lord's pastimes and because his mind and body have been converted to spiritual qualities. Because of intense devotional service, his ignorance, material consciousness, and all kinds of material desires are completely burned to ashes. This is the stage at which one can achieve the shelter of the Lord's lotus feet. The significant words in this verse are tad bhava bhava nukrita saya kriti, which can be translated to mean by hearing or thinking bhava, one's mind and body, asraya krita, assume the same qualities of what has been heard or thought of, anukrita. This is called Tadbhava. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave an example of how this visual and auditory contact with the object creates an impression within the mind and body. He says that when a man sees a woman or hears her name, the image of a woman brings about certain transformation within that man's mind and body. Most men have experience of the metamorphosis that simply a name can conjure within one's being. When a lusty man hears the name of a beautiful woman and dwells on her, he envisions a lady in his mind, begins to think of a romantic encounter, and when fully absorbed in lusty thoughts, his body quickly becomes sensually agitated. He may also be so absorbed in the thoughts of a woman that the resultant impression will color his consciousness during waking hours and cause the sensual dream in his sleep. All that is coming from a mundane name. 
This is Tadbhava, the transformative potency of conveying images, impressions through the agency of sound, thereby inducing psychological and physical physiological changes in the hearer. Now, if mundane sounds and ideas have such power, what then of the spiritual sound vibration or subda? By the same principle of Tadbhava, transcendental sound invokes spiritual transformations in the hearer. The more empowered the sound, the greater the spiritual effect. Similarly, a special spiritual sound has a corresponding effect. The general principle laid out by Vedanta, Anuritti Sabda, quote, one is liberated by spiritual sound. Spiritual sound makes an imp liberating impression on the hearer. Of course, liberation may mean many different things depending on the subject and pur purpose of the spiritual sound. It may mean either attaining detachment from all that is material, acquiring the seat of devotion, attraction to the Supreme Lord, love for Krishna, or may mean being submerged in great feelings of separation from Krishna or Radharani's lover, Krishna. For a Bodhya Sadaka, especially for one who is at the stage of smartum, the subject matter for hearing is Krishna's pastimes in Braj. In the Lord's original abode, his mercy, beauty, qualities, and pastimes are manifested to ultimate perfection. By hearing of them, a devotee tastes the limit of attraction to him. Sanatana Goswami calls the splendor of Krishna's pastimes Vilasa Lakshmi and points out that they have a magical power to awaken prema within the heart. That awakening process takes place as soon as the devotee begins to hear Rajalila. And when a thoughtful devotee carefully contemplates those pastimes with attention during Nam Sankirtan, then love for Krishna imbued with feelings of separation begin to mature in his consciousness. Such perfection is made possible by the intimate potency invested in the words describing the Lord's pastimes. Materialists may not understand, but it is a transcendental reality. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu addresses Krishna saying, Nam Nam Akardi, Bahuda Nidja Sarva Shaktis, Tatra Pita. Quote, you have invested all your potency in your names. And that's the end of the reading. Okay. So maybe what we'll do is we'll, uh, maybe you miss some of that. Of course, when we read something such philosophical, we don't pick up everything immediately, but we'll post what I read. And uh, that maybe that will also help. So give me a, how do I share screen here? Oh, yeah. Guru Maharaj, um, you have to click on share screen, the green button, which you see, yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. There you go, that's it, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's there. Now, um, can devotees move it up and down by themselves? Um, no, Guru Maharaj, you have to do that because you are sharing. Oh, I see. Everyone has to have it. Well, anyway, we'll go back to the beginning and get to the essence, which is the cultivation of emotion and hearing and how two, when impressed upon the consciousness, merge into one and how that particular subject matter becomes the consciousness of the hearer. And when that subject matter reaches uh, intense levels, of absorption, particularly we're talking about the spiritual subject matters through the spiritual sound vibration, one can actually attain to the shelter of Lord's Lord's feet. So I'll uh, see if there's any comments or questions based on what we read. And if anybody would like me to move the uh, text, we have approximately three plus pages 
of information that we read. So we'll see if anyone would like to uh, comment, uh, question, or give some uh, experience. The personal experience may also give help to the inspiring a discussion. Dear devotees, um, please, as Guru Maharaj said, uh, please participate in the discussion. Uh, if you want to comment or uh, ask any question or uh, anything else, please go you ahead. You can see the significance between the power of hearing and the emotion that it creates through the subject matter being heard. So basically, I understood, uh, Guru Maharaj, that uh, this uh, topic is about uh, uh, hearing. So what we are used to hearing till now uh, in our conditioned life. Um, so versus uh, what uh, about the scriptures, like uh, we are just comparing here, Guru Maharaj. And that's yeah, we also understand that whatever we're hearing in our material life is also doing the same thing. It's creating emotions and, and an impressions in our consciousness. And we develop attachments accordingly or aversions accordingly, according to what is the subject matter being heard. As we saw here, uh, when he gave an example, when you're watching a particular romance, uh, then that feeling starts to and when someone will, might even re, uh, imagine their own life in romance or a horror story will create fear or some action movie will increase the, uh, the, the heartbeat. <laughs> so you can see how simply through the power of hearing, how it invokes now both material and spirit. We have many examples in our material life but now we're taking that same principle and seeing how it awakens devotion when applied in the spiritual sense. Yes, Sri Devi. Mm -hmm. Dear Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj, and all glories to Shivra Maharaj for this uh, wonderful uh, con uh, correlation between what we are hearing and what we experience and what we remember. And then therefore what stays in our consciousness, this discussion reminds me of something that happened in my own life. I became a devotee in America and for several years I had been away from India. Then when I went back to India, the familiar surroundings and the familiar people and the discussions that were going on reminded me of film songs, Hindi film songs that I had been used to singing as a young girl. And I was started to sing those songs. And for the next few days, I was remembering all the film songs and singing them. And I suddenly caught myself and I said, what am I doing? I'm singing all these film songs. That is just a nonsense, it's just rubbish. But because I had been so deeply impressed with these songs and singing them, during my teen years and young adult years, they came back. They came back into my consciousness and I was singing those songs. So I realized how powerful uh, the association, the atmosphere, where you are, what you're doing, whom you're associating with, what you're eating even, all those things can bring you back to a different level of consciousness depending on what you're exposed to. And that yeah. also what yeah, Prabhupada what said. That from the very beginning, children need to know all these things. Just, to, just those two things. Thank you. Oh, that point you made at the end. Yes, this is one of the things that are significant in giving directions to children in Krishna consciousness is to impress upon them these early emotions and experiences which will go into their consciousness. And even though they may grow up and maybe forget about them. Once there is a situation that reminds them of that, it'll trigger that thought again or that experience. Mm -hmm. And again, they may also again find the uh, same happiness or experience that they had 
many years ago when they first came in contact with that. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting, yeah. that point you made. As soon as you went back to the old atmosphere, all of that again triggered something that you were exposed to many, many years ago. And uh, because it was so, uh, what we say, a deep, it, it had a certain, uh, in other words, the happiness or the experience you had during those times in your early years was again reawakened completely again in later years. Although you had again experienced something completely different and something that was averse to what you had been experienced earlier, although the impressions were still there in a favorable sense. Nice point. That's a very important point. So, uh, so therefore, hearing more and more about Krishna and developing that emotional attachment that brings about a certain stage of consciousness. As that stage of consciousness increases, the intensity of the emotion also increases. And when it's directed towards Krishna, as Shiva Ramaraj says, it brings about attachment to Krishna, detachment from Maya, and um, other, other spiritual benefits. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj, it's so important for children right from the beginning to hear all these things. And it's uh, very interesting that in early childhood, I did hear a lot of devotional music in the home, but because the teen years were so powerful and peer, uh, you know, connections and, you know, Hindi film songs were the rage. I used to love to sing, but then we would have competitions, you know, it's called Antakshari. There's some, some game anyway, it's not important. But the whole point is it was such a deeply absorbing thing that I, I was, uh, you know, doing for those times that immediately all those things began again. And I had taken up, I had sort of made a promise to myself after coming to Krishna consciousness, I had made a promise to Krishna. I will only use my voice for singing Krishna conscious songs. I will no longer sing mundane Hindi film music, though I was very good at it. I said, no, I'm not going to sing all this nonsense song. But because I went back into that atmosphere, unconsciously, I began singing all that rubbish until I just caught myself. So it's very strong, the things we grew up with. Well, you, uh, you can also make it like, I'll, I'll pose a question to the general devotees. Why are we not so much attracted to hearing Krishna's pastimes? Because we have been given impressions in the material sense that are so strong that we're still drawn to those impressions and attractions. And therefore, we don't really make time to realign our consciousness with Krishna through the process of hearing. And when we haven't reached a certain development in that hearing process, or whatever's there in the material sense will overshadow that uh, the attempt that we have in the spiritual direction. It becomes strong and stronger. So the idea is to make the spiritual energy so strong that it, it will not only create that consciousness, but at the same time it dissolves and removes the spiritual impressions I mean, the material impressions that we've had as we are living our life in the material world. Anyone else? Dear devotees, please participate uh, in the discussion. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please go ahead. Pick something from the, le from the lecture. And I'll bring up the verse. Um, here, here's another section of the lecture. Maybe if you look at this section, you'll get some idea of some of the points that we can also focus on. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have um, one doubt, like uh, when Sri Devi Mataji is uh, asking um, or telling her experience. So usually uh, whatever we see around, everything is material and um, uh, we uh, they are imprinted in our mind uh, um, 
so in our vision so we can imagine those things and um, suddenly they will come up uh, as mataji said when we are in that association we may remember all the old things uh, what we have done previously uh, but how to remember so but we can't uh, um, about krishna's past times we may not able to um, imagine all the things uh, um, and imprint them in our minds uh, so so suddenly they will not come up uh, guru maharaj i feel like that um, so even though we try sometimes um well the thing is we haven't gone deep enough into that process of hearing um just like when you see uh, when you movies have a way to accentuate emotional experiences so if you watch a particular movie sometimes you can't get that uh impression out of your mind the experiences you had doing that movie because in these movies they use music they use images and they use various types of um uh, accentuations to bring about an experience of what's happening in the movie that's why people sometimes become so glued to a particular movie that they can never forget it same with if you were watching krishna conscious videos also but sometimes we'll see now if something is of a fear aspect the emotional experience will be stronger than something without a fear aspect anyone yeah. else would like to comment on that <laughs> anyone would like to comment on the example lord chaitanya gives about the impressions a man comes when he thinks of a woman and how that stays with him and absorbs him not only during the waking hours but even during the sleeping hours such a dull audience <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Guru Hare Krishna. Yes. Um, so Maharaj, uh, uh, about the men and women, uh, this example, what uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, sometimes uh, when, you know, there are certain men who, who are around us and although they are not reacting but when they think something lusty in their mind still sometimes women you know they they feel uh, that thing right and they they react uh, you know the women can understand that there is uh, you know they feel that that man is thinking something so either they react if if they have the same attraction they react in that way and if they don't like they you know uh, uh stay away but they realize they realize this thing yeah so, because uh, because that particular element of attraction man and woman man and woman and man is the most powerful attracting force within this world take that same principle and apply it to krishna consciousness is that we have a stronger relationship with krishna then our relationships between the opposite sexes in this world it's even stronger than that but we don't take the time to develop that mood of attraction and therefore we still stay very we don't get so attracted to krishna's pastimes or we don't get attracted to hearing as uh, krishna's pastimes or when we do we simply simply just go through it and then we move on to something else maybe something more interesting or so exciting by our own our own um, ideas so uh yeah I, the point here is to make that that krishna's pastimes and particularly it's been made here krishna's pastime in vrindavan where is the complete krishna is being given 
Krishna in all his glories and all his opulences and all his emotional attractive feelings expresses completely the Vrindavan mood. So that, that will bring one to pure spiritual consciousness if we absorb ourselves in hearing these pastimes more and more and more. This, yeah. But you, you, your point is made, yeah, that in the mundane sense, well, people can experience that kind of uh, consciousness just by being in the, in the same association with the person, yeah. And generally, women have a more uh, subtle, uh, men, women are more subtle than men. Men are more gross than women. And women pick up more easily on the subtle energies as opposed to men. So when men think of something gross, it becomes, it invades the subtle con consciousness of a woman more so. And she can feel that. And actually, sometimes it actually feels very disturbing. Or in some cases, attracting either one. Yes, and there's nothing has to and nothing has to be said either. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Uh, I think uh, this kind of what uh, you know, maybe this this is a kind of power what women has. But if uh, if they're using it materially, it becomes a little gross. But if the same power is used in Krishna consciousness. Uh, it it happens that you know uh, you feel that connection with Krishna as well. Yeah, so, that's why the that's why the greatest greatest uh, devotees of Krishna are the gopis of Vrindavan. <laughs> They're simply village women. Yes. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Mm, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, oh, dear devotees, um, there's many more points that we can discuss in here. Yes, go Go through the text. A little bit more. want to ask anything? Sorry, I can't. I can't seem to move the text now for some reason. You are moving. Okay. So, Dhammataji, you want to ask? Uh, yes, Mataji, thank you. Uh, no, just uh, not a question, but uh, uh, Hare Krishna, Dhanu Pranam, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. And I just wanted to share my um, experience, like after coming here. And it's very true, like, you know, the constant hearing, the cultivation of uh, that hearing. Um, how it creates an impression on the consciousness. I mean, I personally experienced this, like uh, I was actually struggling with so many impressions that was bothering me that I created uh, in my past uh, experiences and how like uh, by, you know, constant hearing and this uh, association, how these impressions uh, really got it, you know, less and still I have some impressions that are really hard to go away completely. But if I really look back, um, uh, uh, the uh, mind that uh, so many things that were bothering me, I don't know, like I felt like it's automatically, uh, like, you know, um, gone away. So, uh, and I can see like, you know, the pattern in my life, how I used to live, I didn't put any effort, but automatically I can see that change in myself, uh, my desires, everything like, you know, I see so much transformation in that pattern. Yeah, yeah. When we see how the, how the impressions and, and the emotional effect of those impressions carry on through later years in life. That's why sometimes we see people will suffer for, from some impressions in their childhood while they're in their adulthood, during, and it happened during their childhood, but in their adulthood, the impressions and the experiences and the emotional power have became so strong. 
I'll give you an example of the material thing. Uh, there was one devotee. He, uh, he, uh, he, his father, he had a big family. There was about uh, 10 or 11 children in the family. So his father got one, one time went really mad, got intoxicated and killed all his brothers and sisters and his mother. Him and his brother were the only one that survived. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, later on, he came to Krishna consciousness. And, uh, you know, he was always struggling, but he became a nice devotee. But at one point, those impressions of that, I mean, he saw his father killing his uh, siblings, his 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 that it was uh, that impression somehow or other, maybe we might say his, the power of his Krishna consciousness was reduced for some time and these pressures came back and he couldn't bear it anymore. And so he committed suicide. He committed suicide because he had the same, um, the same ang anger that his father had towards his family, he had that same anger in him and he was afraid of that anger coming out and being used against others. In order to prevent him from doing harm to others, he took his own life. <laughs> now you can see the power of these emotional experiences, especially when they are, when they're violent or when they're romantic, how powerful they are. So again, we want to go back and make these same impressions so strong mm -hmm. in Krishna consciousness that they become a focus of our consciousness all the time. Mm -hmm. Therefore, sometimes watching Krishna conscious videos are nice, especially Krishna's pastimes, gets you a nice impression. I think... Um, there is that one series called um, Little Krishna. It's done really nice. Uh, it's a series of three, uh, three long videos covering Krishna's pastimes in Sri Vrindavan Dham in a very cartoon type uh, present presentation. But it's done so interesting and so expertly that we find devotees like to watch it all the time <laughs> and they can remember it and they can uh, it helps them to remember Krishna's pastimes even more than reading it from the book so you have the visual experience of an emotional impression you have the uh, you have the uh, uh, hearing experience of an emotional impression but the visual is always stronger than the hearing process. Therefore, in order to get awakened to Krishna consciousness, we would need to hear regularly. If we have a break in the hearing process, that will reduce the, the ability to develop these attractions for Krishna. We need to do it regularly because the hearing process is a more of an extensive and long-term process that develops as opposed to the visual. Mm -hmm. But both can be applied simultaneously. Okay. And of course, Shiva Ram Maharaj does emphasize here uh, Krishna's pastimes in Sri Vrindavan Dham. Like mm -hmm. okay. And then he says, by careful contemplation of those pastimes with attention during Nam Sankirtan, when we're remembering Krishna's pastimes during the, while we're chanting kirtan, then love for Krishna imbued with feelings of separation begins to mature in his consciousness. Interesting. So, yes, pretty much, but that, um, so thinking about Lord's pastimes while chanting and doing Sankirtana, it's, um, yeah, it's like a very 
higher level, I'm still at a neophyte, but uh, I can see the consciousness has changed so much um, since I've been here. Um, I can see so much. Yeah, change. continue in that way. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And also and it'll, it, it'll, it'll increase more and more. And you'll also see that those thoughts and impressions of the material experiences you had will actually be forgotten and lost as they become overshadowed yes. with Krishna, Krishna Lila. We have uh, two participants who raised hands. I can't see who they are, but maybe Srimati can call on them. Yes, good, Maharaj. Uh, Raj Prabhu, uh, you want to go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Okay. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, I noticed that with this lockdown, where there's a lot of the time I, I, we're working from home, and at home we have we can have a nice a nice Krishna conscious environment, and we can have like surroundings Krishna conscious surroundings, and we can have soft Japa or kids and in the background whilst we're working uh, but then you really I find that I really really noticed it when you have to go back into the workplace like for a couple of days and then you like you're not ready for it then you're just going out into this and there's so much bad in bad impressions out in the world uh, and it hits you and then you like if and if it, then it hits you the next day as well, and then you get you come home and like you feel tired and and when you feel tired it's worse because then they just take over more. Uh, but whilst you're at home, it, it seems to be so e much easier because you can you're in control of your environment and you're in control of who's around you. But when you go out there, you really notice it and you know. Yeah, sometimes when there's a nice point you just brought up, which you didn't mention, but it's an interesting point that um, the more we become Krishna conscious through the environment that we have created in our home, the more we feel adverse when we're outside of that. Now, a person who is not so Krishna conscious may not feel so adverse. <laughs> and think, well, this is just what it is. But when the taste for Krishna consciousness develops and we are in the environment that is opposite of that, it's like a clash of experiences. And then we just feel, well, like, let me get back to that pure atmosphere again. Yeah. That is a uh, that is an interesting point. Mm. And the other thing that I experienced is, uh, depending on your uh, attachment or relationship with whoever is speaking to you, whether it's good or bad, things that are being said uh, or things that are being done. If you have a stronger attachment, then it has a bigger impression on your mind, and that could be a good impression or a bad impression. It's like if yeah. I give you a... and from a material point of view, good and bad are the same because they're mm. material. What is good is what's favorable for Krishna consciousness, and what is bad is what is unfavorable. So anything material generally is bad because it takes one away from Krishna consciousness. Okay. Even when in people saying like things that help with your Krishna consciousness, like I had so many people talking about, if I give you an example, I had so many elevated devotees saying, oh, you should read Bhagavatam every day. And I was thinking, yep, that uh, should be, but I don't. And then they say, yep, you should do this. No. But when you said it, 
I felt, I, I felt, oh, I must do this. So it's something about when a certain person says it, then you like sit up and listen, thinking, oh, I must do this. Mm -hmm. You've already been primed for it. And so when you hear it again in a certain way, it mm -hmm. clicks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Mark. Yeah. Keep the hearing process going. This, that'll keep us in the spiritual atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's hard to avoid all these material impressions. They're everywhere. Yeah. That's why we have to be very diligent and creating and continuing to imbibe spiritual sound vibrations. Like when I, uh, when I take breakfast, I listen to Srila Prabhupada. When I take lunch, I listen to Srila Prabhupada. When I'm in the evening, I make sure I always hear kirtans. The evening time is for kirtans. During the day, most of the time, it's for lectures and philosophy. And that's how our, our society is also geared too. Because Srila Prabhupada used to say, would, would say that in our temples, every night we should have three hours of kirtan in all of our centers. And during the day, we have discussions on philosophy and various types of uh, principles that surround our execution of devotional service. You follow that little formula. Of course, you can listen to kirtans anytime. But I find that works good, especially at night. The kirtans really leave a nice impression and consciousness on the mind. And it prepares one for taking rest nicely. That's my experience. Of course, Srila Prabhupada said we should also read Krishna book just before going to bed. That's also nice. Thank you, Mark. So the idea is to surround yourself with spiritual sound. And focus, as here has been emphasized, focus on the, the Raj mood, the Vrindavan mood, which has Krishna as in his glorious position as the Supreme Personality of God in, in his mood of Krishna and Vrindavan. Thank you, Maharaj. I'll keep trying. Yeah, the process is just keep going. <laughs> okay, anyone else? You yes, had another uh, hand. Is it Prem Kishori Mataji? Um, uh, yes, Shimaji Mataji, thank you. Uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All goes to Prabhupada, all goes to you. Um, I seek your forgiveness. I'm on the run, so unable to turn my camera on. Um, but thank you so much for the wonderful um, insight. I just wanted to uh, share that uh, the, the, I read the research paper by David Wolf. I don't know that devotee's initiated name in Florida, who did his PhD thesis on um, the effects of chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra and the three gunas. Yeah, um, I, I, I remember that also, yeah. So I had read his thesis and then it, this is exactly what he did over there that um, they gave a challenge of chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and then they um, studied the qualities of different gunas and then they saw that how the Satya Guna becomes very prominent in a person who is chanting this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Uh, yeah. Dear, his name is Dear Krishna. Dear, oh, his name is Dear Krishna. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. <laughs> Um, yeah, that, that was a nice study, and that study has became a foundation for uh, understanding, uh, yeah, the power of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, <laughs> or the effects okay. of that. Yeah. He did that as a secular presentation to the material, materialistic society. Um, yes, and it's very valid. I actually use it when I do book distribution. Um, and I show that paper so people do get uh, impressed by the, uh, the idea. And they did functional MRIs and they saw that what part of the brain is working more. So it was very nicely done. 
uh, yeah, on... there's other there's other devotees who have followed up on that, and they're also doing similar studies, and just to somehow or other sh attract people to chant Hare Krishna. That's the idea. <laughs> uh, yes, and I want to share one experience that I had a colleague uh, whose wife was dying from uh, breast cancer. She was dying. She was 37 years old, but if you if you would look at her, she looked like an 80 year old lady because of the disease. The body had aged so fast, um, and they were like American and Catholic. But I requested him one day that uh, can I please come to your house to uh, do this uh, mantra meditation. So I took one devotee. I think most of us know him. He's an Amarnath. Das, he was. He used to. Stay, um, he used to preach with me in Massachusetts. So we went. He's a very nice kirtaner. We went, and then uh, she was in so much pain that I sat with her. I touched her finger, and she said, "This, this is. I can't bear it. It's so painful." Uh, because, um, and I, I couldn't like believe that touching the tip of a finger can be so painful to the body. Uh, but when Amarnath started singing the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, uh, suddenly she, um, actually the pain, she felt less of a pain. So I've seen it uh, with my own eyes. Uh, yeah, the holy name is very powerful. It's like Prabhupada said, it would, it would be the panacea for all ills, everything. <laughs> Uh, and, the, and from the secular point of view, uh, the sound uh, vibration and effect on the, the neurobiology. So uh, we were a part of one uh, very big study on uh, neurobiology of trauma in children. Um, and, uh, and then uh, one part that was proved effectively was uh, that when the mother is pregnant and she's exposed to these uh, threatful sounds, uh, the child is born uh, with a with a fear, with a certain fear factors, and they don't really reach their potential. And if they go on re uh, hearing these voices again and again, then they get subdued. So it's proven the neurobiology of trauma in children is proven with the sound. So yeah, that's why it's important that during that time of pregnancy, the women are in the Vedic culture were very carefully protected. In that and in that um, period, and they were given everything they needed, so they could be happy, comfortable, and the child would also benefit. Uh, yeah, that's a very impressionable time, both for the mother and the child. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Maraj. Maraj, how will I get this document? What you're sharing? Uh, where can I get this from? I can. Um, I'll send it. I'll send it on to on to the conference, and then anybody, everyone can get it from the conference. Thank you, uh, Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you, Prem Kishori. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Um, so, Samidatri Mataji, you want to ask anything? You want to share? Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you and all devotees. Uh, I would like only to, uh, to share my uh, realization. Uh, I went through many problems uh, through life and uh, when I uh, began to listen to spiritual sound, uh, Srimad Bhagatam, uh, 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 the life uh, changed because uh, the all problems uh, are not so strong anymore. And, uh, uh, and often, uh, often the was, I think, a miracle because I had some problem. I, uh, and uh, this day I listened some lecture and uh, got answer the on lecture or if I uh, if I reading open the Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita, uh, I found uh, the answer on my problem. And mm -hmm. uh, it was very miracle and uh, helped me very much uh, to uh, solve my, uh, my problems. 
And the yeah. same uh, every day uh, uh, when I listen, every day listen Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, uh, it's uh, easy to go in during the day and to mm -hmm. met. Some Liberation by sound. And another point that you just brought up that's very interesting is that even if the sound vibration doesn't deal with the problems we're having, it doesn't matter. That sound vibration will clear out the consciousness and create a favorable consciousness in the mind, whereas whatever negativity that were bothering us before is gone. It's gone. Sound vibration is even, the spiritual sound vibration is even stronger than material sound vibration because it is coming from a purer source. Uh, therefore, sometimes just by hearing, uh, all our problems go away. Yeah. And, the, and the hearing may not have anything to do with the problem. It's just by purifying the consciousness that a whole emotional uh, consciousness is created through spiritual sound. Yes, I have this so we can't emphasize enough the importance of the spiritual sound and the emotional development it creates within the mind and within the, the heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So go on hearing and then we'll become more and more Krishna conscious. Uh, thank you. But recently I recognized that uh, I have to hear more than uh, you uh, uh, said uh, in this lecture, uh, more about uh, Krishna, more about this Lila. This uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita helped me with problems and with this uh, not to be uh, uh, too much uh, uh, on material, but uh, I have to, to read and hear more than to attract uh, to have devotion attract to the supreme lord to krishna this right. thing this is our, our material problems are not so important they'll go away with spiritual sound <laughs> yeah i have yeah. to begin yeah. listen more yes thank you Hare krishna. thank you uh somadatri Hare krishna Say hello. Okay, so we reached the uh, one hour mark. Um, yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes. Um, I'll stop. I'll stop the share right now. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Get back to the screen. Okay, thank you very much. Tomorrow we will. Um, what do you want to announce tomorrow? Uh, yes, Guru You have all that information. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Thursday will be the Iskon Harrisburg devotees. Uh, the class will be with Iskon Harrisburg devotees, and uh, the time is uh, twelve p.m. UK time. Um, and uh, 7 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Eastern, Guru Maharaj. So, dear devotees, thank you for participating, and uh, we all will meet again tomorrow um, at 12 p.m. Devote, devotees want to read ahead in Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, mm -hmm. eighth chapter, verse number 42. Okay. This is tomorrow's class. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay, and I'll send on the conference as soon as we end here that text that we read from um, from today's discussion. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time and association this morning. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Jai Ho. Srila Prabhupada. Jai. Thank you to all the devotees. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. This format is very nice, Guru Maharaj. I think once in a while, it's nice to do a reading and then reflection.